Hello everybody. Today we're going to set up my full Deep Sky astrophotography rig. We're going to go through all the equipment used and we're going to set it all up. My name's Trevor and you're watching Astro Pilot. So the first piece of equipment here is the Skywatcher stainless steel 3H thread 1.75 inch tripod. This is a super rock solid tripod that you you need something like this for any long focal length deep sky astrophotography just to have that rock solid base where no vibrations no uh, no wobbling no flexure of the tripod um, before I got this I was using the photo tripod I'm using for the camera right now but this is a awesome tripod I got it from first light optics um, I don't know if you can get it from any uh, US website I try to look for it but um, it didn't seem like they had it anywhere, but uh, I got I just ordered this from First Light Optics under the Star Adventure section, and it is a great tripod. It's just like the HEQ5 tripod, but without the little metal nub for the uh, left-right adjustments. Um, overall, solid, super solid tripod. Highly recommend it if you're looking for any uh, solid base for your Star Adventure. Um, Highly recommend this. This is the first thing of the whole setup, and this is where everything goes. So, we're going to move on to the mount. So, we got the tripod here. The first piece of the setup is the latitude base for the Star Adventure. That just screws on to the uh, 3 8 thread base here. Line that up with north, and we will get it mounted on there and just make sure you get it screwed in tight lock it down there we have it it's all locked in and this is where the mount is going to sit so the next item is the star adventure itself um, great little great little entry level mount um, manual manual mount uh, non go to right ascension only tracking um, I've used this mount for almost nine months now. Super happy with it. Um, I've basically mastered the art of finding objects with it. Um, relatively easy depending on the object you're using, but I can't say really anything bad about this mount. It's an awesome little entry level, uh, powerful mount with 11 pound payload capacity. So we're going to go ahead and slide that on the dovetail, lock it down, and there we have the mount. Next up we have the counterweight shaft and the declination bracket with my counterweight mod. I did a separate video on that to show you guys how to attach a anything with a 3 8 thread to the bottom of it to uh, add some extra weight if you need it. So we're going to slide this counterweight all the way up and this is the declination bracket so we're just going to slide that in just like that. And I've made marks to where I know it's balanced so right there leave some room where you can see through the polar scope and that is unlocked the clutch is unlocked and that can swing freely the next item is the William Optics dovetail saddle um, this is what you need to get uh, if you if you want precise declination balance um, it doesn't have to be the William Optics I just got the William Optics to match my scope and everything but uh, really high quality, full solid aluminum, and uh, it just screws on to the base up here, and that gives you the ability to balance your declination. Whereas if you just screwed something on directly to the declination bracket, it would be fixed and you couldn't balance it. So this allows you to slide up or down to balance your declination. So that's that, and we can, once we get the scope on here, we can slide that counterweight down. Next up is the scope itself. I love this telescope. This is the William Optic Zenith Star 61. I've had it for about eight months, about the same time I've had the Star Adventure. Um, can't recommend this scope enough. Um, William Optics did an amazing job on the design of it. I know you, there's other brands with similar scopes like this with the like Sharp Star 61. 
but uh, William Optics quality is just awesome. Um, the first time I saw the scope was one of Astro Backyard's videos. Um, he did a review on it, so that's where I got the idea of getting this scope possibly. It's a nice little compact doublet apochromatic refractor capable of wide field deep sky astrophotography and it's a very versatile telescope for far away distant galaxies as well so you really can't go wrong with this scope um, I've been happy with it ever since I got it uh, no complaints whatsoever just an awesome high quality versatile little telescope with a 61 millimeter aperture plus you have the built-in diffraction spikes for focusing Another thing I did add was this extra Vixen dovetail saddle where I can put my red dot finder. I added this, which is about a 20 bucks here. Um, it just uses those screws right there and you can just mount it right there. So look, nice little add-on if you need to mount anything on extra because up here I put my guide scope. But awesome little mount, I mean awesome little telescope. Super happy with it. Highly recommend it if you're looking for a small refractor to get into astrophotography. So, with that being said, we will mount it onto the t onto the mount here. So we'll just slide that onto the dovetail. And we will tighten that down. And there we have it. Lock the clutch down and we will slide that counterweight down just to get it balanced a little bit. So now that we have the telescope on the mount, we can uh, add our camera and guide scope and red dot finder. So the first thing, this is the QHY mini guide scope, super lightweight, about four and a half ounces. Uh, the perfect guide scope if you're operating on a limited payload capacity like the Star Adventure. And my guide camera is the ZWO ASI 120mm Mini. Great low cost, high quality guide camera, mon monochrome guide camera. Very sensitive. Um, this is the uh, probably the most lightweight guide scope you can get, um, which is nice. So that will just slide onto the Dovetail Vixen, Vixen Dovetail on top of the Xenostar 61. And we'll just tighten that down right there. So that's our guide, auto guiding system right there. Next we'll add our red dot finder. The next little accessory is my red dot finder. Highly recommend this if you're using a Star Adventure. It really helps you get in the general direction of your object if you're if you have a guide scope on top, it makes makes it hard to aim towards anything. You don't have a precise aiming point. So this is a nice little accessory for the Star Adventure because you're finding everything manually. You can line it up with your camera view and uh, get in the general direction of your object. Okay, so next up we have my main imaging camera here. This is the Canon Rebel XSI, a very old camera but still uh, really capable for deep sky astrophotography. I bought this camera for $40 off eBay and I self-modified it myself so this is uh, hydrogen alpha sensitive now. I astro modified it myself and I'm using the Itis LPS D2 light pollution filter. I'm in a 4-5 Bortle class sky so light pollution is still pretty relevant. Um, really like this filter. Uh, in the future I'll probably get like an L Pro or start getting into some narrow band stuff if I get a dedicated camera. But uh, overall uh, good budget astrophotography camera if you're getting into the hobby. And now we're gonna mount it to the telescope. So We have the T-Ring, William Optics T-Ring for Canon cameras on the Flat 61. And we'll just line it up. It's just like putting the camera lens on. And we'll twist it. 
and there is the camera mounted right there and focus on here is around 30 millimeters back focus I know that from just where I've done it so many times it's about right there that's where focus is at so that is all the equipment mounted on the telescope now for the fun part cables and cable management and get them all connected everything connected to the computer so next step is getting all the cables hooked up so this part can be a little tricky getting all your cables uh, adjusted and where they're not snagging or anything so what I've done recently I'm um, using a USB hub and it tucks in that little gap right there and it fits perfectly so I just use a Amazon Basics 4 port USB 3.0 USB hub and that just fits perfectly I used some velcro to give it a little friction and that fits right in there just like that so of course in the future the ASI Air will replace a USB hub and computer but for now it's a good little way to uh, have all your cables right here without them dangling down and causing tracking issues so the first thing we'll connect is the guide camera and luckily the camera came with a little short USB too where you don't have to use the long one so this just uses a USB-C type port on the camera and I can just connect that into the USB hub right there and next we'll, we, will, we will connect our main DSLR camera and I'm just using uh, it's actually a GoPro cord uh, mini USB micro USB plugs into the side of the camera just like that and then I usually like to hang that cable right there to get it out of the way and then that plugs into the USB hub and the last item that we're going to attach to the telescope and put to the USB hub is our dew heater band this is a very important piece in the summertime and wintertime you get dew in the summertime and frost in the wintertime so we'll just go ahead and wrap that around the dew shield and plug it right in to the USB hub it's a Protage USB powered dew heater band I got it off Amazon and then that's the whole cable management system on the telescope from here we will use a USB 3.0 extension cord and this will plug right into the computer plug that in there and let it rest right there and hang down we still have to attach our guider cable so this plugs in right to the guide camera just like that and then that plugs in to the star adventure down there and we can also run that through there to get it organized that works really well right there so all that's left now is my AC adapter for my camera so that plugs in right into the camera like a battery and that gives me a power supply for my camera and I usually like to just keep this velcro to the tripod and then that plugs into the wall and that's the whole cable system for the whole setup and then we can just power the mount itself we can just power the mount itself using a power strip using a wall plug and a micro USB plugs right into the side of the mount right there and that is everything the only thing uh, left would be to set up the laptop 
outside I use a Panasonic Toughbook CF53 pretty rugged laptop to use outside this is my main processing computer as well I use Adobe Photoshop love it um, but this is the whole setup right here alright everybody I hope you guys enjoyed this little setup tutorial for my whole deep sky rig here um, Go ahead and smash that subscribe button, hit that notification bell to get updates when I upload and everything like that. Uh, comment, subscribe. Can't thank you guys enough for all the support and subscriptions and all the views. Um, thank you for watching this video here. As always, clear skies and thank you for watching Astro Pilot. And here's a couple pictures that you can expect from a rig like this.